So in this video we want to show that the set of all 2 by 2 matrices, which we would denote M sub 2, 2, that the set of all 2 by 2 matrices forms a vector space. And to do this we would need to step through and show that the ten, uh, these 10 axioms or properties hold. Um, I'm going to do the first six and then you're going to get to do the last four in the homework assignment. So to, to show that the set of all two by two matrices forms a vector space, we just walk through and show that each of the each of the ten axioms that we have hold. So we start with the closure axioms that uh, indicate that we need to be closed under uh, addition and we need to be closed under scalar multiplication. So if we have a uh, if we have matrices A B and a scalar C, so we let A and B be elements of M22 and you're, we're going to need two scalars ultimately you'll need two for the homework so we just make the things that we need a couple scalars and we're going to uh, restrict ourselves to real number scalars uh, then uh, what do we know then you know what does A plus B look like A plus B looks like it's going to be A11 A12 a21 a22 plus it's going to be b11 b12 b21 b22 which is going to equal and we just do uh, component wise addition so it's going to be a11 plus b11 a12 plus b12 by the definition of matrix addition uh, that we've already covered a22 plus b22 and this one's going to be a b sorry b21 and a22 plus b22 so we can we know how to add two matrices and if we multiply c times a we're going to get c times a11 a12 a22 a sorry a21 a22 which is just going to equal we've defined scalar multiplication with matrices so we know it looks like this so c a uh, c times a11 c times a12 c times a21 c times a22 so what do we notice well we notice that if we add two matrices two two by two matrices or we multiply a two by two matrix matrix by a scalar the result is a two by two matrix which means that we are closed under addition and scalar multiplication because the result of applying those operations to matrices results in a two by two matrix not some other size of matrix or other type of object so comma clearly m22 is closed the set of all two by two matrices is closed under addition and scalar multiplication scalar multiplication and then that shows the first two properties and then we just step through and show the third property so we need to show that addition is uh, matrix addition is commutative so So now, now show property three. So A plus B, what does A plus B look like? Well, A plus B, we know what that's going to look like. We just, in fact, we just did A plus B. It looks like A11 plus B11, and it looks like A, A12 plus B12, we just did A plus B on the previous slide. This one looks like A row two column one plus B row two column one and A22 plus B22. But the components of the matrix are just real numbers and we know that real number addition is commutative. So we know that we can change the order of the addition of the elements. We can go B11 plus A11, B12 plus B sorry a12 and this can be changed to make a better bracket b row 2 column 1 plus a row 2 column 1 
and B row two column two plus A row two column two. But this is what you would get if you did B plus A. So that shows that addition is commutative for the set of all two by two matrices. Now you need to show associativity. So it looks like on the first slide, I probably should have defined a third matrix C. So we'll pretend that I, on the first slide, uh, created a matrix C right there so that I had everything that I needed. So here we've got we've got uh, we've got it to show the associative property that the the order in which we group elements before we add doesn't matter. So we do A plus B plus C, which we know looks like we know what A plus B looks like. A one one plus B one one A one two plus B one two, and this looks like A. 2, 1 plus B, 2, 1, and A, 2, 2 plus B, 2, 2. And we're adding it to matrix C. So matrix C is going to have uh, components C, 1, 1, C, 1, 2, C, 2, 1, C, 2, 2. And when we do the addition here, we're going to get A, 1, 1 plus B, 1, 1 by the definition of matrix addition, it's going to be this element plus this element. So C11, this element, A12 plus B12, plus this element, C12. And then we're going to get A21 plus B21 grouped plus C21. And then the last one's going to be A22 plus B22 plus C22. And then we recognize that the uh, elements of the, of the matrix, the rows, the rows elements of the rows and columns are just real numbers. And we know that real number addition is commutative. So we can regroup. This is A11 plus B11 plus C11, A12 plus B12 plus C12, A21 plus B21 plus C21, A22 plus B22 plus C22. We can group it like that and then we recognize that this is what we would get if we took matrix A and added it to the sum of the matrices B plus C, which verifies the associative property. So that's property four. Property five says we and uh, we need to have an add additive identity. There needs to be something in the matrix matrix world that plays the analog of the number zero for real number addition. So we'll just create that object. Let I'll do I for identity matrix. Let identity matrix be the matrix that looks like this zero 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 zero. Then. Clearly, if we do um, if we do this matrix plus A, we're going to get we take the sum of the two matrices zero plus A one one. We'll get zero plus A one two. We'll get zero plus A two one. We'll get zero plus A two two, which is just equal to A one one A one two. A21, A22, which is clearly still the matrix A. And then we can say by similar argument, we could show that A plus I equals A as well. And here we can get away with saying by similar argument because what we would do would be so identical to what we just did that the reader should understand when they see this they should understand what it is that we would do next. So that shows that an additive identity exists. There is something that plays the role of the number zero, like uh, for the real numbers. There's a, an analog for it for two by two matrices. And then finally, pro property six says we need to show that additive inverses exist. So for matrix A, which we know has components We'll reiterate A11, A12, 
a to one a to two consider the matrix I'll give them a name D that looks like this opposite of a11 opposite of a12 opposite of a21 opposite of a22 then what can we show we can show that a plus D equals a11 plus the opposite of a11 a 1, 2 plus the opposite of A1, 2, A2, 1 plus the opposite of A2, 1, and A2, 2 plus the opposite of A2, 2. But a real number plus its opposite is 0, so we know this adds up to the matrix that we showed on the previous slide is the identity matrix, or the, the um, identity matrix for addition. There's an add, this is the, we need to show that. For to show that the additive inverse exists, we need to show there's a matrix that we can add to matrix A to get the identity matrix 0, 0, 0, 0. So we just showed that this works in one direction. We showed A plus D equals the 0 matrix. And then by a similar argument, we could show that this equals the 0 matrix. So we'll say that. We'll say by similar argument. D plus A also equals the zero matrix. So that shows the first six properties hold. Homework, you get to show the last four. It would be the same type of, uh, same type of idea, so the proof should be completed fairly easily.